Hmm? Just say a few things, I'm just going to see what the level you're doing. Uh, there was an old man from Nantucket whose dick was so long he could suck it. He said with a grin as he wiped off his chin, if my ear was a keyboard, f it. Testing, one, two. So the Sir Radio vinyl sessions are. Um, um, a vinyl session is where we. So. Soho Radio vinyl sessions. It was a. It's a series of unknowns. Our vinyl sessions, right? Is the most mad thing, right? When when Adrian and Dan told me about the concept, I was like, "What have you guys been smoking?" Seriously. So the vinyl sessions is basically people coming in, a band setting up at Soho Radio here on Great Windmill Street. We have a proper vinyl cut and lathe and that thing gets brought out of its beautiful glass cabinet. And I record it directly onto a lacquer disc. Whilst you're doing it live. So you create this one-off acetate, so there's only one in existence and it's cut live there and then. And you give it to me and say bye. Afternoon ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Soho Radio, and this is another exclusive vinyl session with Mr. Ruben Fox. When Lewis said he could make a portable lathe, it was a no-brainer, really. We just had to talk him into bringing it down here. And he loves a mad plan, is like the rest of us. It's like as a kid when you, when you like look behind your bed, and there's just like loads of fucking... <laughs> People have grown up with records, I think, and, and they know what they are. Um, and they never really thought about how they're made or that you could record straight to one, you know. Um, and then I think when that's realised, it's like, oh my God, that's like, that's fucking great. You know what I mean? Let's, let's do that. Everyone's brain works differently, I guess, and I always think about stuff like that. It, I don't know, it's just it's what, you know, gives me the horn, basically, <laughs> as Derek and Clive would say. As that's going around, it's, it's turning this, this is called a lead screw here. Um, and this carriage engages with the lead screw. So that's, that carriage is now moving slowly that way as you can see if I speed it up. Um, and as that's doing that, the stylus is, is cutting a groove on the disc. So you get your spiral. And the needle is vibrating inside it. In the 50s or 60s, you could go in and cut a record in a booth and you'd walk away and you'd have that actual physical copy, which was really exciting. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to give the artist a different experience Yes, it's a radio session, but we're showcasing a recording technique that is, you know, a century old. I think it's so important for humankind to really celebrate the crafts, the skills, in whatever industry, but the lay, the vinyl sessions really signifies craft, time, effort, passion. The tip of this stylus is, is man-made sapphire. It's very fragile and it can break extremely easily um, and these ones are actually no longer made as of like last April which is very worrying actually. <laughs> um, so when, when they go I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm working on it though. Could that be the death of it? Could be the death of it, yeah. If there's no stylus then you, you, you can't do anything. Um, and the same with the discs. To make, to make the disc is, is an art form in itself. I'll show you one actually. There was a company in America making these as well, but they, their factory burnt down recently. And now there's only one left in the world. Um, and they're, they're in Japan. They're called MDC. And as you can see, this is a near perfect one actually, it's super flat. It's an aluminium, aluminium disc and it's coated with nitrocellulose lacquer, which is like nail polish. And the, the trick is to get it absolutely flat. It's a real art form that 
that has been per perfected over many years to make a good lacquer. This is live on vinyl, um, she just recorded it and yeah, the money will be going to Black Minds Matter UK and so it's only right for us to get into it and listen to it. America's on fire. I care about it because I... It's, it's the format that I enjoy listening to music with. Uh, and I always have, because I, I grew up that way. It, it just fascinates me how someone can make a, a disc like that, or a stylus like that. You know, it's, they're arts, they're, it's, someone's got a craft, and, and I, I appreciate people's skills when they, can, when they can make stuff and do stuff. And when it comes together to make something that I do, then it's even better. It's quite like surprising, really. I thought there'd be a lot of people who would, who would go, oh, can I come round and like, you know, learn how to do it or, or watch you do it or just come in or do something. But I think people enjoy it, using it, but not necessarily in, interested in learning how to do it um, anymore, at least. Um, Weird, look. No, not weird, just um, I think everyone else is weird. <laughs> One of the first rules of vintage audio equipment is don't move it if it works. Right. Ready, Targa? You've got an A side and a B side, and the pressure's on from the moment that they walk through the door. If you mess it up, you can't go back. This is like one track straight to vinyl. The band are nervous. I'm nervous. The guy who's pressing record on that is like nervous, like watching every little, you know, groove being cut. And yes, the urgency, you can't, it's like going on a date. You can't redo it. If you fuck it up, that's it. You're, you're out of the game, you know what I mean? It's just sort of the, the magic of it, really. Um, I think everyone in the room feels quite tense because you know it's that one take. I feel for them because I can see them on the other side of the glass, like, <clears throat> and I, you know, the, the singer's like, <clears throat> <clears throat> and everyone's like, oh, because so, so everybody wants to do a great job. You've got to make people feel at ease as soon as they walk through the door. But it is chaos. Wheels running up and down the stairs. I would say when it's happening, you've got no time to really feel any strong emotions one way or another. You've just kind of got to get on with it. You just know it's going to be really stressy and really chaotic. And guitar cases, people clambering over things. It's go, go, go. It's chaos, it's frantic, there's an energy, but you either embrace that and get on with it, or you sink or swim. It's one of those. But it is chaotic, like put what people don't realise is the station here at Windmill Street is tiny. Probably the size. They probably look and go, oh, how are we going to fit in there? There's always this initial sort of, perhaps from, from members of the band, this kind of wondering how we're going to pull this off. Are they justified that, do you? Um, I think it's one of those... I think, you, I think with the whole thing, you have to see it to believe it. So are you kind of um, reassuring? Yeah. I mean, no one's out and out said, fuck this. Here we go. Uh, one, two, one, two. I'll be honest. When we first started doing them, I would be so nervous about doing it. My nervous energy would be at a high. You know, the equipment is slightly temperamental. Is it going to cut? You know, we have broke needles. We have had times where, shit, this, this isn't working. So the first final session, we got the machine in, we had everything, and we said, oh, we should do a simple one, perhaps get an acoustic duo, someone we knew we could work around to see what happens. But then Dan phoned up and said, oh, I've got Sion Kuti and Egypt 80 this Friday. Should we make it our first vinyl session? 
I'll be the pain of the revolutionary. So we've never done this before, and the very first one we did was with 15 people in this tiny space. Chunkadi, who is basically Nigerian royalty, the son of Fela, with Fela's band Egypt 80 in here, performing his music. It was just incredible. I kind of remember talking to the team and going, well, if we can do this, we can do anything. We had some of them up here. We had people in the voiceover booth downstairs, in the other studio downstairs, all over the place. You know, we had horn section, we had drums, we had bass, we had guitar, we had backing vocals, we had Sean himself. It was quite a shock to have all these people arrive and perform live and cut it straight to vinyl. Which is still to the day the largest ensemble we've had. I don't know why we decided to do 15 people as the first final session. You know, I, th I think we couldn't quite believe what was happening and we were doing it. And that perfectly encapsulated the chaos. Anything's possible if that's your first session. It's kind of the Soho Radio way, where we kind of go big straight away. Not really that prepared, but it works out. You know, it's the Soho Radio way. Every artist that comes in, no matter how big or small, uh, or, or successful or whatever, all of them go through this moment where they realise that what they're going to do, absolutely live, is going to be captured in a moment and that you, you can't go back. We're hoping that we will pull on the heartstrings or the sensibilities of why they became a musician in the first place. This is one of the holy grails of recording. To cut a dub plate, that's how my heroes did it. You know, if we were to come in, you'd be like, live to WAV file. It just wouldn't be the same, would it? This is it. This is not like your, you know, your, your Spotify, iTunes or whatever, you know, you know homogenised affair. This is the real, this is the raw, this is the moment, and capturing that spontaneity. And that's what they're doing. They're just capturing that moment, that little slither within the space-time continuum and putting it right there, boom, for everyone. Oh, digital recording makes it very easy to stop and start again, delete stuff, you know, you cut and paste stuff. But actually what's happening here in this moment is captured. And that includes taxis going past, or like there was one point the other day where Hugh Grant looked in through the window and everyone was really excited about that and it was just this kind of all those moments in time are just captured on this disc and then you have it as a as a physical thing. I think one of my favourite final sessions was Idols. At the point they were about to explode. This place it can be winter or summer, it doesn't matter, but it always just gets so hot in here. So obviously idols, they're just jumping about and screaming. The energy they brought and how much they love doing it. And what's interesting is after the vinyl session happens, we take them into the radio studio and we play back that freshly cut vinyl straight on air for the first time. And you know, it's been cut literally like a minute before. And the way idols were just intently listening and watching and enjoyed it, you know, it's so nice seeing that. It's been absolutely amazing having you here. I mean, just one more thing. How was the recording direct to violin? It's quite exciting, isn't it? I, I loved it. It was, um, no, but do you know what I mean? You yeah, could I just know, come I here. Um, I, I cannot wait to go home and listen to it. You know, if they didn't believe at the start, they definitely believe at the end. And I think it's, it's always quite a magical thing seeing them with that finished product in their hands and it's happened in two hours and then we've got to kick them out and do it again with a, another bunch of people who again have the same sort of like are, are you sure about this it's been an overwhelming experience to see their artists reactions of hearing the listen back what you crave as a musician is you know yes live shows yes recording but those moments of excitement when everyone's kind of forced into a moment of of presence and and these are really concentrated moments of presence when you're recording live to vinyl and everyone's eyeball to eyeball in a room. It feels like a live performance if there's only one chance. There's an element there that's like, I don't know, a spontaneous energy that comes in that you don't get if you know there's more than one chance to do it. And that's what I like about the vinyl sessions is that it's, it's that moment and that's that. It's exciting for you, but watching them listen back to their own record in real time that they've just recorded, it's kind of like, 
ooh. Um, but it's just so nice seeing, you know, these professional and long-term artists being excited about doing this and saying, oh, I've never done something like this before. Electric energy, whatever that, you know, however you describe it, it's slightly anxious and unknown. It will go back to insecurities you have as an artist or a musician or a, an engineer. What if I fuck up? It, that's, that's why there are nerves. Things go wrong, but it's, it's great because that's life, isn't it? I mean, I can't think of anything that's gone right. I mean, <laughs> what, is, what is right, you know what I mean? I think when you're exposed to something different and when you are vulnerable, there's a real opportunity to connect. I think that it's, it's a good thing to be exposed in those ways because there's, there's something spontaneous that can happen and will happen most likely in those moments that you're never gonna recapture or you couldn't have planned for. And I think that's the thing to remember. That moment's never coming back. I think that is the big thing that I love. The fact that we've, for the first seven years of what we've been doing, there's, there's a shop front, okay? Anyone can walk in. It's only just beginning, you know. There's more, there's more to come. This is, this is like the, the, the simple bit. I want other people to enjoy it because that's, that's what it's about. That's what everything in life's about, having a laugh. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, yeah. Huh. Live forward, learn backwards. Never see the reason when it happens. I believe our brains can't handle the funk. Wait, give me a sneak peek. It's better you don't, because I'm walking in faith. Yeah, may stumble sometimes. I'm far from a saint. I'm done with playing. Pick up my tools. It's time to build. I'm tired of being in the shame. Mm. Being in the same, everybody say I'm tired of being in the same mm. Being in the same world Best believe I'm on my way, hey Life can be so complicated I just say how it is, can I live though? Still I push on through, Okay, best believe I'm on my way, hey Life can be so complicated